I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today I'm going to do a response to a video that we saw on the internet this morning from my online training hub where they claimed that they were hacked and they expect they were hacked in a certain way and everything in the video was essentially misinformation. And I want to provide a little feedback on this video for you guys so that my audience has some very important information you have to protect yourself against scams like this. I'm not saying that the person making this video is the one doing the scam. I'm saying that I think she was scammed and is happily repeating obvious misinformation sent out by people who are socially engineering her, known as hackers, who are trying to get her to spread misinformation to keep people insecure. So we're going to dig into that right after the bump. All right, this is an extra video, so I'm trying to get this squeezed in in a single take. We'll see how I do. Okay, so on my online training hub, <clears throat> they were hacked, and uh, th this is their story, right? We'll assume that this is true, that they were hacked and they lost access to their YouTube accounts and some other social media, so LinkedIn and a bunch of other things. These things were all hacked, and uh, they they had their passwords changed, and they, they lost access, and their credit cards were stolen as well. Now this is complicated because it's a bunch of different things. So how would someone get access to this? Well, they ran through some information. There's a ton of really critical details that we don't have. We don't know what they did to secure themselves. We don't know a lot of things were hidden. So we can assume a bunch of information that we should have, and sorry for the parrot in the background, it's been crazy all morning, is missing because either they did bad things and they don't want to mention it, or they aren't aware of where security is supposed to happen and aren't mentioning it because if they did good things in those areas, they'd want to point them out. So let's start with, they said they had three Windows laptops or desktops and two mobile devices. Both, I believe, were iPhones. Due to what was accessed and when, they're ruling out the iPhones. That's probably a foolish thing to do because they have no idea what has happened or not, but they had some good reasons for it and we'll just, we'll accept that as being true. What we know from their video is that the things that were hacked were myriad, happened more or less all at the same time, and they were confused as to how it could happen but came up with a really unreasonable, completely crazy theory and presented it as being true. And that alone is a major cause of security problems when people stop using logic and start using emotional responses of things that sound scary or that they don't understand. And so throwing that out there is this is this has to be what happened and not looking at the obvious things that are very likely to have happened and, and then resulting in something that does nothing to protect themselves against probable mistakes that they made in the past, and then telling other people to do these things, spend money, do these things that are actually probably insecure, and doing nothing to actually address the issue. So what did they see? They saw that someone got access, but without their password. So this person got on to their YouTube and started adding uh, reset accounts, like uh, alternative emails and things like that, turning off their two-factor authentication, making it easier for them to then access it from somewhere else and reset the passwords. And eventually they were able to get a hold of Google, get Google to help them recover the account, and all ended up well in the end. So things are fine. But... They came to the conclusion because they had Windows, they were using Microsoft Edge, and they had antivirus, that the answer must be that one time they were at the airport, they were on public Wi-Fi, and clearly someone stole the session uh, token for their YouTube. And this is, quite frankly, nuts. This is based on a completely false fear of open public networks that was established. And we talked about this in a recent episode about VPNs 15 years ago when public Wi-Fi was new and people were not using any security whatsoever. It was common for people who were completely exposing themselves to be even more vulnerable when on public Wi-Fi and it became a common place to get hacked. But let's be reasonable, those same people were at risk of being hacked previously just on dial-up because all the fears that you have on Wi-Fi existed on dial-up. In fact, they were worse. It was just a little bit more of a pain and you had to target people. You had to go physically a little bit closer when you were hacking their dial-up. Wi-Fi made hacking a little bit more convenient, but not technically any easier. 
But there was a time period where people had no idea that they should be doing things secure. Vendors were not providing secure websites. Banks were just letting your data be out there in the open. And there was, so because of that, there was this time period where Wi-Fi in the public space was scary because everything else was so lackadaisical about security. That was a real fear a long time ago. But people who don't spend any time thinking about technology, who are just very lackadaisical themselves today, will often look back on that old data and apply it to the modern world, which is not appropriate because that is not the world we live in. That is the world we came from. And we talked about that previously, so I'm not gonna harp on that, but this is a basic flaw right from the beginning, starting from a point of clear misinformation about how Wi-Fi works, about how session tokens are those things. So the thing that they're claiming was hacked was a YouTube token, but that YouTube token is secured via HTTPS or a VPN, end to end with a lot of security on it. That mechanism for that is incredibly strong to prevent things like man in the middle attacks, regardless of things like your Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi does not provide a level of real protection, never has, never will. So assume you can never expect your Wi-Fi to protect you. So everything else has to assume that you're on Wi-Fi, on dial up or something else that is completely open and they have to protect you themselves. They can't rely on some endpoint to do that protection, which is super important because even if your Wi-Fi was incredibly secure, your ISP is not, the government routers are not, there's a million places along the path where things won't be protected. And just like why you don't want to use a VPN provider in most cases, because it funnels all your information into a single point where a single person that you don't know or trust has access to all of your data accumulated in a single place, you need to protect against that as well. So you should never, never let it cross your mind to use a VPN if you haven't already encrypted everything to the point where you don't care about security, at which point, why do you have the VPN? That's the key here. VPNs don't provide a level of protection. They do one very specific thing that is completely irrelevant. So if a VPN makes things better for you, you've screwed up to such a degree that the VPN isn't the point. And if a VPN is used on a properly secured system, it's useless, at least as far as security goes. There are things that everybody mentions. Like, you know, I wanna hide my IP, I wanna show up as a different place, I wanna whatever. Okay, all that's fine. Those aren't security, those are other things. Like I wanna access Netflix from somewhere else and I wanna confuse them because they're not using a security mechanism, they're just using a general allotment of IPs mechanism to tell where you are because it's a contractual thing with their vendors. Like whatever, different, different discussion. VPNs aren't completely useless, they're just useless in this particular context of securing things like this. Now, the woman who was authoring this video said, well, they did some basic things. They had Windows, they had Microsoft Edge. Well, these things flag you right from the beginning. Okay, so you're on Windows, that's fine but it doesn't make you extra secure. This is the least secure possible option and all their machines were Windows. Now they have a YouTube channel where they do stuff that is Microsoft based, they're a Microsoft MVP, so they can't say anything bad about Microsoft. They feel compelled to work with their vendor, but these are all things that flag you as insecure and being lackadaisical about security. Windows is the most likely thing to get hacked, not only because it's the biggest thing in the public space, but because it's the least secure. But even more than that, it's people who choose it or the least secure group of users. So you have already flagged as using an operating system that makes you more of a target and who you are as a user makes you an even bigger target. It's worth putting in effort trying to hack you because chances are you're not taking security seriously because you're on Windows, and then using Microsoft Edge, again, it's not that Edge itself is so incredibly insecure, but there's no way it's as secure as the systems made by the experts that they're copying, right? Everything about Edge is about lowering the security of your system because they wanna push ads to you and work around your ability to protect yourself from their malware and adware. So everything about Edge itself is about being insecure. That is its fundamental purpose is to lower the security versus Chrome so that you will get more ads and Microsoft will make more money. That's why it exists. And the only reason anyone would ever contemplate using it is out of abject laziness that it's not worth protecting yourself from all these ads and insecurity and just installing Chrome like everyone else does. And I'm not saying Chrome's the best. I use Firefox most of the time. But the point is accepting the worst possible thing as the default it's again, we're just lazy, lazy, lazy. So at the end of this, one of the things she never said was that they got their laptops or desktops and installed Windows themselves fresh, which is if you work with IT, an absolute bare minimum of how to use any computer device you ever get. You can never trust the app, the operating system that is on a machine when you receive it. You cannot, that would be crazy. I know that millions of people do, and they're all very, very subject to getting hacked easily. Not just because of that, but because they're not taking security even with the most modicum of, of weight. 
you need to have a clean install of your operating system for two reasons. One, you can't trust anyone who had access to your computer originally, including the vendors, and the vendors will tell you, right? It's not their job to secure that test operating system. It's your job to have you or your IT department, and this includes individuals, there is no exception from this, you're responsible for doing a clean install and knowing that the system is, is as it should be from a starting point. That is not their job. They're not liable for that in any way. They're not gonna intentionally, you know, put you at risk, but they, they can't protect against it completely and it's not their job to in any way everyone will try to get out of doing it again because of lazy by saying well but but it's that's their responsibility but it is not and nothing you say is going to make it their responsibility they have not guaranteed that they have not suggested that they're doing anything secure they put those operating systems on to show you that the hardware works and nothing more nothing about it is supposed to be still running and you can prove this by going to any normal vendor looking in the list of programs and it's full of malware, it's bloatware, things that should not be on your computer, things that you would never want to find on a computer, Microsoft Office, McAfee antivirus, Norton antivirus, these are bad things. And Microsoft Office has its place, but you don't want it just on as a demo. If you are going to use it, you will always go out and buy it from Microsoft. You will never want something pre-installed on your computer ever. And all the other things, those things are actively malware, things that lower the security of your system. And if you did a clean install, you're security would be vastly better instead of having to have those things on, having to remove them, having to disable them, and trusting that having something malicious on your computer is now clean after the fact. It probably is, but you're trusting a whole bunch of things for no reason and doing extra work. So that's the first part. Then she never mentioned other real, so that's really big. If she was in any way worried about security, she, the first thing she would have mentioned in this well thought out video is okay, we actually did some basic stuff to be secure that everyone should do. Didn't mention it. She mentions they had antivirus, but didn't mention that they used Microsoft Defender, which is the only one that's reasonable if you're on Windows. This suggests that she's throwing it out there that the, maybe they had a third party that they don't want to admit to that may have left them vulnerable, like McAfee or Norton, as we described. If you're on those things, again, you're flagging yourself as insecure, you're acting insecure, and you're opening up your computer by disabling security that should already be there. She didn't mention their firewall. We'll assume she just doesn't know about it and didn't think of mentioning it, but is it on or off? We don't know. And is it a major component to keeping you safe? No, but it's a really simple one that should never be disabled. And that that it wasn't mentioned suggests that she may have installed some software that disabled it and she didn't want to bring it up because it would be an obvious point of dismantling her other points of being secure in the first place. The other really major thing that we absolutely have to expect in any discussion before we start talking about how could you, you have been hacked, she should have said it was completely up to date and we keep it up to date all the time. This was never mentioned. So the things that actually involve security were completely glossed over or ignored in every which way things that she does mention were irrelevant and misdirection. So the fact that they were on Wi-Fi at some point really doesn't matter. The fact that their computer was Windows or what doesn't matter. What matters is there's all these things that are ignored that easily and are expected, especially in a situation where you're running Windows, you're running Edge, we already see a pattern of not taking security seriously and being very lazy, just accepting defaults. Then we don't mention all the places where anyone putting in the first tiniest thought about security would point out what they did to secure themselves are ignored, we have to assume that the pattern of laziness continues and that all those critical steps were ignored. So that the computer was ripe to advertise itself as ready to be hacked and was probably not kept up to date, didn't have Defender, didn't have a firewall, wasn't cleanly installed, may have already had malware on it, and on and on and on is actually a really safe assumption. So we have to assume, because it just makes sense, that the relatively simple process of hacking her Windows computer, one of them, there's three to work on, and having access to it taken over a period of time is likely what happened. Not that they hacked the YouTube encrypted session tokens, which, while theoretically possible, is extremely difficult. And the thing that she proposes that by being on Wi-Fi made that easy was something that Google addressed seven years ago in 2016. That is not a real world threat today. That she brings it up and just ignores the fact that that shouldn't be possible is a major telling point that she wasn't taking security seriously in discussing the security situation. And then that doesn't address how anything else was hacked. She knows that her YouTube was hacked, but she also knows her LinkedIn and several other things were hacked. How did those things get hacked if it was their YouTube session token that was taken? 
Maybe somehow they got a bunch of tokens all at once. Okay, but that's incredibly unlikely where they really logged into all those things at the same time on this public Wi-Fi and someone managed to get all of them, all of which should be an impossible, let alone all of like, this is crazy, but let's assume that even that was possible. She then points out that they've never put their credit cards online. The only place they might be stored is in their Microsoft Edge browser, and someone got their credit card, a card that was cut up and could not have been skimmed, at least sometime recently. She did leave out that maybe it was stolen sometime in the past, and this is something that it just wasn't used for a long time, but that's very unlikely given the way the credit card theft works. And then suddenly her credit card was being used and she knew it wasn't stored on any website. It was not part of any of these transactions. So that had to be taken from somewhere else. From her browser is the only place she could come up with. And we'll give her the benefit of the doubt that the browser is a pretty common place for that to potentially be stored and to potentially have uh, that accessible by someone who's hacking the system. Because if they hacked a vendor, they don't store the credit card information typically. So it's unlikely for this to be a related event in some way, for that to be how they would ever get credit card information. Getting it from your browser is a reasonable thing if they didn't have it stored anywhere else. So let's assume that that is true. What this tells us is that the any hack that she is proposing about YouTube and all these other things, if it was session related, is unrelated to getting the credit card. So now we know that her computer was hacked and she's still assuming, even though she proved, at least if this one thing is true, she proved that her computer was hacked, that someone got onto her computer, got control of it, and stole data out of her browsers, which should be encrypted history. And then she's still proposing that the other systems weren't hacked through that really obvious mechanism. We know if that was true, that those people had access to YouTube and LinkedIn and all these other things from her computer. And she's still sticking to, well, they must have been hacked through this essentially impossible th fear, uncertainty, and doubt thing that's just a little bit complicated enough to create this sense of urgency. Oh no, someone on my Wi-Fi, so what's the result? You hear all this and you think to yourself, boy, I bet she's going to try to sell us on a VPN. Now, luckily she never came up with a VPN link for us to buy. There's no associated links, there's no you know passive income, but she does come to the conclusion, well, if you had a VPN, this couldn't have happened, which is absolutely, abjectly, in every possible way, false and would actually make you more likely to be hacked for a couple technical reasons but the most important thing being it gives you a false sense of security by causing you to ignore a bunch of really obvious things that she's already ignoring and giving you this feeling that well i solved it by putting on this thing that does absolutely nothing nothing at all and so this is a really dangerous thing that she was socially engineered clearly multiple times into just doing nothing about security, to using insecure systems, to trusting things. And there's other things she said, well, we ran and we're really sure we didn't click a malicious link. That's not something I can trust someone stating these other things to be certain about. How would she realistically know, right? I understand that maybe you can know you clicked on no links whatsoever, but we already have established from this video that she's not very tech savvy and basics of computers, either she doesn't know she needs to mention or is not doing well and is maybe hiding or doesn't want to have to admit to. So we know those things to be true, trusting that both she and her husband and possibly anyone else, maybe they have kids, didn't click anything ever that might have been malicious is really a stretch. Now it's good to say, I don't think we did. I feel really confident, okay, but they're acting like it's not possible and it's very possible, but they're also acting like they need to click on those things. They're probably running really insecure things like Microsoft Outlook, which is just again, begging, begging to be hacked. You can't run Outlook without saying to yourself, boy, getting hacked sure doesn't matter to me. You do not put Microsoft Outlook onto a computer when stability or safety are being at all important. But you just, you can't, right? And it's fine if that's something you wanna use, but you're just, you have to accept that you're letting a whole bunch of security and things go to a lower level. They just aren't the priorities that they would be if, if you weren't running that. Okay, so she then says, well, but we ran another antivirus. She never says what any of these are, right? Which to some degree I understand, she doesn't want to advertise a product or whatever, and I appreciate that. But also knowing what these things are matters. Was it the one that was built in that didn't catch anything in the first place? What level of trust do we have in whatever antivirus she was running? Was it up to date, right? We don't, she didn't say any of the things that matter, right? Even the, a bad antivirus is, more important when it's up to date than a good one that's out of date. But then she said, well, we, and we also ran a third party antivirus, not the one that was on there already, and it didn't find anything. And while that's not a bad thing to do, 
looking at it as if running an antivirus somehow actually tells you whether your system has been compromised is a massive security misstep. There is in no way suggestive that by running an antivirus and getting a negative result that you weren't hacked or that malicious things aren't on your computer running. First of all, nothing needs to be running on your computer whatsoever, especially if you're running Windows and Edge. She listed all this scenario that make you say, well, yeah, there's so much, there's so many ways that that could potentially get hacked without putting something on the computer that that's possible. There's also the very real possibility that something was put on the computer and then removed when it was done. They didn't need it anymore. They would want to clean up and hide. So that's almost an expectation. By the time she ran the antivirus, it was probably irrelevant. Third, not all products that are going to get flagged in that way are going to show up on an antivirus scan. If someone installed TeamViewer and used it nefariously, it would show up as a completely reasonable piece of software and not be caught by an antivirus, even though it was being used to steal data, because it's a normal tool, just like RDP or any number of things that we use every day, but they can also be used for bad things, of course. And then there's always the possibility that it simply can't detect whatever the product is. And there's the additional possibility that the hack has so much control of the computer that it's able to lie to the antivirus because when your computer's been hacked like that, you control everything and any antivirus that runs or is put on after the fact, you can't trust. So she's trusting things that she should never trust in the first place. And I understand that it's just one of a number of pieces of things, but she presents it as being relatively definitive when it is anything but. It's not even suggestive, let alone definitive. And at the end of the day, her whole thing came down to, well, you could tether to a phone and she ignores the fact that that may expose you even more than being on Wi-Fi because there's no encryption on that either, but it goes over a wider area and there are very simple tools out there that are used to hijack that data and there are companies that do that all the time. I have worked at places where every bit of data passing over our phones was hijacked uh, and she leaves out that police departments can do that. Anything a police are doing, police are generally not all that secure. They're getting hacked. They're hacking you. That data is being collected through like, so that's not a secure thing. So she gave an insecure, secure suggestion there. And then she said, or use a, a VPN. This is the solution. And that is in no way the solution. It completely ignores all of her real risks and focuses on this really unlikely or completely falsified risk of this session token that just makes absolutely no sense. That is not a real world risk for anything in a secure world. It's, it, all these secure websites have so much protection against this, specifically for these reasons, that it's, it's, it's absolutely unreasonable to think that somehow in this, this very lackadaisical attack Right? The thing that actually happened to her was lazy. This was someone who was just taking advantage of someone who was very insecure, who wasn't uh, taking things seriously, who was very exposed, and just saw a vulnerability, probably because the system wasn't patched, or they went to an insecure website, and they took advantage of it. This was a low-hanging fruit scenario. This was not a went above and beyond and got government, because what she's suggesting is a state-sponsored attack on her system where they're going after this really deep level, like really putting in effort to break into her system. And what did they get out of it? At the end of the day, really nothing, right? This was This was a the suggestion is that this was a massive attack with very little result. Anyone who had the kind of resources to do the kind of thing she's suggesting would have gone so far beyond this. They would have hacked into the banks that she was using. They would have hacked into Google themselves, all kinds of things, right? And it's not what happened. They stole her credit card and it was blocked. They stole her YouTube account and they got nothing. They caused some inconvenience, but state-sponsored people who are going beyond the known ability of, of hackers to do are not failing then on the simple stuff after that. And they're not getting caught that easily and they're not being spotted that easily. All right, so these things just don't add up. And it's very important when you're looking at security uh, recommendations and videos online. Do the people actually understand the pieces? Are they telling you the things that matter? Are they actually experts? Or is it just a person who's trying to get you to buy a VPN or trying to make themselves feel better because they were hacked and it was really their fault and they probably know and they're just don't, they just don't want to tell you. And I don't know why she was hacked and no one can know why she was hacked because there was no effort put into observing the system, monitoring the system. And that's fine. There shouldn't be, right? It doesn't make any sense for a, a small home business of that scale to put in that that kind of effort, but to then produce a video that produces a ton of fear and uncertainty and doubt, all based on total misinformation that casual research should turn up as being absolutely false is a problem. 
And that itself, this video that I'm referencing, is itself social engineering. I'm not saying that the person who made the video is attempting to scam you, other than getting some views for something that they didn't do their research on and didn't ask an expert. But what has happened to them is they have been socially engineered by VPN vendors, maybe just through a website, maybe they had a phone call, maybe some scam IT person actually, you know, got a hold of them and took them for a ride, we don't know. But what we do know is at the end of the day, they're repeating misinformation and using it to promote insecurity and fake scams for VPN vendors to make money based off of this fake uh, security idea, this, this fake fear, fake security to fix the fake fear, that's social engineering. So what she's doing is acting as the malicious entity and trying to hack you by making you afraid of something that you shouldn't be afraid of and giving you a fake solution that solves nothing. And you can feel confident in that fake solution because the problem never existed in the first place. It was falsified for the purpose of making the video to promote VPNs. Again, I don't think she's thought that through and I don't think she's aware that she's been played and the real hack is that they use this opportunity to convince her to tell her audience a whole bunch of mistruths that helps a very large industry sell VPNs and another industry to steal your data. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. You can sponsor me by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Do not buy a VPN for security, but consider buying one. If it does something you actually need, just make sure it really does the thing that you need and is not just some smoke and mirrors that people are trying to sell you and don't listen to IT people who don't actually know how things work. Make sure that when you get IT advice that they're able to explain on a technical level what's happening. Real IT people know what's going on and aren't gonna try to sell you a VPN for security for a thing that doesn't really exist. I'll see you all tomorrow.